Um, visibility one zero, sky clear. Temperature one seven, dew point one two, altimeter three zero zero seven. An altimeter is a vital instrument in all flight conditions, VFR and IFR, day and night. Understanding how it works is essential for safe flying, but the technical details can get a bit overwhelming. In this video, we'll break it down to the basics without getting too caught up in the intricate mechanics. In aviation, we commonly use a barometric altimeter. As its name implies, a barometric altimeter does not directly measure altitude, and there's a good reason for that. Measuring altitude directly is quite challenging. Instead, it adopts a more practical approach, leveraging the relationship between pressure and elevation. Here's how it works. A barometric altimeter is essentially a maestro at translating changes in pressure into changes in altitude. To make this work, it relies on two pivotal pieces of information, the baseline and the lapse rate. The baseline sets the stage at the pressure where altitude is zero. The lapse rate serves as the translator between pressure changes and corresponding altitude changes. Consider it the altimeter's scale. It is rooted in the lapse rate of international standard atmosphere, while you don't need to sweat the exact rate, but it's useful to know that it's roughly around 1 inch of mercury pressure drop for every 1,000 foot increase in elevation. This inverse correlation between pressure and altitude is what enables the barometric altimeter to perform its magic. The lapse rate comes pre-calibrated, but the baseline must be set manually. This is done by aligning the altimeter with the local METAR setting. Think of it as telling the altimeter, hey, this is where altitude starts at zero. Once it has this reference, it takes care of the rest autonomously. The altimeter remains in constant communication with the environmental pressure via the static port. A rise or fall in pressure leads to the aneroid within the altimeter either contracting or expanding. This, in turn, moves the gear according to its pre-calibrated lapse rate to display your current altitude. The mechanics behind this process aren't your concern. What's important is that the altimeter depends on the static port to detect changes in ambient pressure. If the static port becomes blocked, the pressure remains unchanged, and so does your altimeter reading, regardless of your actual altitude. Additionally, make sure to properly set the altimeter according to the METAR. If the baseline is off, your altitude readings will be off too. Let's explore an example to understand how baseline calibration affects your altitude reading. Consider a scenario where you're transitioning from a high pressure area to a lower pressure zone. Currently, you're flying at an altitude where the ambient pressure is 26 inches of mercury. The altimeter setting for this location is 3000, and your altimeter reading is 4000 feet, which matches the true altitude. As you fly into the low pressure region, you reset your altimeter to 2900. Meanwhile, your altimeter senses a pressure decrease to 25 inches, which is 1 inch lower than before. However, this drop in pressure is offset by an equal change in baseline pressure due to the reset. Consequently, your altitude reading remains unchanged and still aligns with your actual altitude. Imagine the same scenario, except this time you forgot to adjust the altimeter in the low-pressure area. The altimeter is fixed at the previous baseline pressure. It interprets the pressure loss of 1 inch of mercury as a 1,000-foot gain in altitude. The reading is now 5,000 feet, but your actual altitude is 4,000 feet. You're cruising at an altitude 1,000 feet lower than you think. Picture another scenario. You're cruising on autopilot, maintaining a constant altitude, and once again, the altimeter reset slips your mind. In this situation, the airplane will strive to maintain a steady altitude by seeking the necessary pressure level. No surprises, it will place you at a lower actual altitude, and this time you'll find yourself even closer to the ground. Remember the old saying, from high to low, watch out below. Of course, in real-world flying, such dramatic pressure changes are unlikely, but you get the idea. Now, here's the twist. In our example, we've assumed the environmental lapse rate perfectly matches the standard one. 
but that's rarely the case in the real world. Air, being a fluid, is a bit of a free spirit, it's always on the move. As it rises or sinks, it stirs up localized pressure fluctuations, which can throw your altitude reading off the actual altitude in similar way as we just saw in the example. Another significant player in lapse rate variations is temperature. Cool air prefers to huddle together, while warm air loves to spread out, just like us humans curling up when we're cold and stretching out when we're hot. Consider a column of air with a fixed number of air molecules. When the air cools, these molecules cozy up, and the column shrinks. However, the total number of air molecules hasn't changed, just each molecule now occupies a smaller space. In simple terms, the air column becomes denser. When the air warms up, it's the reverse. The column expands, and with the same number of air molecules in a larger space, the air density decreases. Now, you should see why aircraft performance takes a hit on those warm days. On a toasty day, the propeller must take a much bigger bite to pull in the same amount air it would on a cooler day. That means it's got to work extra hard. Let's get back to the lapse rate. Consider this green column representing the standard atmosphere. To keep it simple, we'll narrow our focus to the lower section. In a standard condition where the environmental lapse rate matches the standard, your altimeter provides an accurate read of actual altitude. Here's where it gets interesting, in regions with much colder air, the air column shrinks, and the air density goes up, resulting in a faster pressure drop over a shorter distance. But your altimeter remains blissfully unaware of these temperature and density changes. It still believes a pressure drop of 1 inch of mercury translates to a 1,000 foot increase in altitude. And it sticks to it in warmer areas too. So, even though the heights differ in these three scenarios, your altimeter reading stays the same. Let's visualize what happens when you fly at a constant indicated altitude from a warm area to a cooler region. You think everything's a-okay, because your altimeter setting is spot on. However, there's a catch, due to non-standard lapse rate, in the colder zone, your actual altitude ends up way lower than what it was back in the warm region. Remember, from hot to cold, watch out below. To sum it up, the combined effect of non-standard pressure and temperature makes the altitude curves look more like a roller coaster than a straight line. To prepare for your knowledge test, make sure those standard lapse rates for pressure and temperature are locked into your memory. And keep in mind, when pressure and temperature aren't playing by the standard rules, your altitude reading might not match your actual altitude. Don't forget that common culprits for altimeter errors include things like wrong altimeter setting, clogged static ports, and mechanical hiccups. Stay alert as you navigate the skies. Congrats on mastering altimeter basics! Now, give yourself a pat on the back and me a thumbs up! In the next video, we're going to explore different types of altitude and uncover which one your altimeter is really indicating. Stay tuned!